So around a year ago, I decided to sell a lot of my astrophotography gear. I'm left with like a good tripod that I need, a telescope, an ASI Air, a few things like that. But as you can tell, I've got the itch again and I'm ready to get a system back together. Hopefully I will have it together before the fall slash winter, but pricing and other things like RC racing are hindering that. So what would I buy right now? And what am I probably going to buy unless something else comes along? I'm going to tell you, I'm Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel. We're going to talk about collecting some photons today and what I feel is the best for me and might be good for you. Now, the reason why I'm picking some of this stuff is because of all of my years of experience and things of, that I bought and tried and I know what I like. And I also am being as reasonable as I can with my budget. This doesn't mean that this is the best equipment for you. This is just kind of where I'm at. So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Let me know. I'm going to give you some of mine. So the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to subscribe to my channel so I can basically teach others how to do things. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subscribe to Telescope Live. And that way I can always have unlimited data to play with. I can set up imaging sessions and I can download their one click observations and always keep my processing skills on point. Now let's get into talking about the actual hardware. And this is where things are going to get fun. So the first thing that I'm going to get is it's going to be the mount. It's a no brainer. It is the ZWO AM5. I'm going to put a card up here that tells you about my AM5 when I had it before. I was a very early adopter of the AM5, worked through some of the teething cuts. The thing still worked flawlessly. It carried the equipment, no problem. I see no issues out there at all of anybody still having issues. You can get them used on places like Astro Mart or Cloudy Nights. Agena even has some stuff here too. If you're interested in getting stuff and using something like financing, you know, you can just get the AM5 and it just works. It works with the ASI Air perfectly and it also works with Nina, everything now. All ASCOM, it's beautiful. Now, I had a Skywatcher EQ6 R Pro, heavily modded, the best bearings, everything performed flawlessly. I sold it to get the AM5, did not regret it one bit. I had the whole kit. I put it under my telegizmo cover. I moved it in. I moved it out. It weighed nothing. I also did the modification to it. I had my AVX tripod because I used to own a Celestron AVX. This I knew would fit on the AVX with a little modification. So I kept that tripod here. It's still here. The carbon fiber tripod that they're giving away for free with the mount works great as well, especially if you set up in the grass. I set up here in my driveway and I live next to a state highway and the carbon tripod in the PhD2 would show the vibrations of cars driving by on the state highway. So Carbon fiber tripod, not the best for me. So AM5 is definitely it. When it comes to AM3, I've seen that the AM3, I've seen more people saying less good things about it, not promoting it as well as the AM5. I believe it's certainly just as capable and it's going to fit any payload that I am ever going to buy because I'll never buy some massive large telescope. I've been there and done that and we'll talk about that later, but I would just probably stick with the AM5. It's not much more money and I know that it works. Now, when it comes to cameras, this is where things are going to get fun. My choice is going to be the 2600 Duo and a couple reasons why. And I'm going to go with color. You can go with monochrome if you want, but then you're going to be talking about filter wheels and filters and things are just going to get super duper crazy. I don't have the skies in Ohio good enough to spend weeks on targets or nights, days, whatever. To, to just justify spending all that money. Like that's kind of the reason why I got rid of the stuff in the first place. 
The Duo, the 2600 is the perfect size for me for wide field, narrow field, anything else. Pixel sizes and all this kind of stuff really, to me, doesn't matter anymore. You can adjust all that stuff inside a PixInsight. You can oversample, undersample, whatever you want to do with your stuff. It's just going to like, it, it's fine. You don't really have to worry about it. So I want a good, clean, decent size sensor. If I had the money to spend on like the 6200, maybe... Maybe I would do it, but I think that just kind of takes away from the backyard astronomer feel, you know, because a four or $5,000 camera really isn't in a lot of people's budget. And I just don't, I don't know. This works good enough for me, and I think it's going to work good enough for 80% of you. The reason why I'm going with the Duo is I don't have to buy a guide camera. I don't have to buy a guide scope. I don't have to mount it. I don't have to worry about another USB cable getting caught or any of that stuff. I don't have to worry about focusing it or anything else. I've seen the videos and the proof that no matter what kind of filter you put in front of this thing, it's not an issue when it comes to guiding. It just works. It's just easier. And the price on this thing for $19.99 is... You know, it's kind of insane because I think that's how much I paid for my original 2600 when it came out. Maybe it was $17.99, but anyway, you're saving money already by going with the 2600 Duo. You do me, I'll do me, you do you. Now, boy, when it comes to picking telescopes, I have a six inch Richie Crichton, however you say that type of term. And it's, it's still here. I didn't try to sell it because, I mean, they really went up a lot in value. I could, probably could get something out of it. I've got, like, the focal reducer, the good one that goes with it from Starzona and everything. But I wanted to keep a hold of it. It's already got the uh, EAF and all that stuff mounts and all everything. So... I can literally get the tripod, the camera, and I'm back up and imaging. I've got an ASI Air still. These are all things that you're probably going to need to get. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But it's kind of a wonky scope. It's, you know, it needs collimation. It needs some work, this and that. Um, it is what it is. If I were to buy a telescope right now, I would have a hard time. I would really like to create what I had before, which was the Red Cap 51, fully automatic, wide field, this, that, everything else. But I did want something that was a little bit more purpose. The problem with the 51 and that maybe like up to like an 81 uh, type of ref refractor is that the field is so wide that during galaxy season and kind of like those in-between times of the year in the northern hemisphere here, where the, uh, you, galaxy season can be kind of boring. Um, you get nice wide angle shots of like Markarian's chain and this and that, but it's just not, you know, you kind of lose some time. I would really, really consider, I am liking the way that this Carbon Star 150 is looking right now. It looks like it's got 95% of the problems that these Newtonian reflectors have in them, um, like the Sky Watchers and everything like that. Maybe even they'll come out with like an 8-inch version down the road so we would have even more of a light bucket. But this thing is just going to perform. It's going to be lightweight. It's going to be easy to deal with. It's got plenty of mounting options to mount your hardware and all that stuff. All that kind of stuff I had didn't have on the Red Cap 51. So I had to buy all these like different mounts and I had to cable everything differently and all that kind of stuff. The one thing that this would be missing that I loved on my 51, which hopefully he may, I'm sure he makes a big one by now, would be the automatic flat panel uh, from Deep Space Dad. Totally worth the money for your astrophotography. I've got a video on that right here if you want to check that out. You will... If you, if you don't have one of these things, you're going to want to get one. That is for sure. Now, we can't talk about this without talking about the Red Cat. Because it really is what just got me really going full bore in astronomy for the last time over the past like 12 to 14 years. 
the technology was there, my skill set was there, my skies are here, and it is what enabled me to get amazing pictures. Um, check out this video here of my Dark Shark Nebula. You know, I wouldn't be able to capture that without the wide field scope or doing something crazy like a mosaic. And that thing had like a lot of data in it, like many nights. I can't even remember how many nights that it had. But the Red Cat was just so fun and simple and did so good. I know it's popular. It would be a great setup for anybody. Like if you're going to buy a one-time setup, I think something like the 51 or the Red Cat 61 would probably be the best way to go. Even though for me, I want something with a little bit more reach in the future because I've kind of been there and done that and we can zoom in a little bit closer on some areas of the sky. So that is why I would be looking at this Apertura. Now, of course, there's other items that you're going to need like filters. Uh, I've got the mini PC. I've got the ASI Air. I've got the autofocuser all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm pretty well set. Don't forget about software. Software costs like PixInsight or Photoshop are just kind of a given. You're gonna to have to factor those in. And then as you keep going further down the rabbit hole, things like Star Exterminator, Blur Exterminator, all the exterminators, because they really, really make your images great. Because you don't wanna spend all of your nights trying to fine tune your images. They're not going to ever look perfect, so you might as well get the best equipment like this that makes up for some of that. Maybe it has some flaws, and then let software and AI do the rest. Am I thinking wrong? Let me know in the comments below. But what do you guys think about these choices? I've given you my reasons. If you have any reasons that you don't think this is a good idea, let me know in the comments below, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.